Hello everyone, this is a compilation of every news and news stuff that at the very time of writing those episodes which are from the 1st to the 31st of August are what I deemed worthy for a curated Filipino interested audience. Maybe there are news unsaid and if so, here are some suggested news that I may have missed that my audience felt needed to be said. Let's go to the vortex, that is the comment section below. Whoa. Inflation rate plummets. Uncle Sam against Manila Bay reclamation projects. And Tevez a terrorist? Hmm. Kumusta for me? This is Avor Joseph, and welcome to News Item Worthy Recap Weekly Edition Number Ten. The summarization of the news starts from the headlines for the 30th of July to the 5th of August, 2023. Kaya magkanda for the place in selective summation. This is the news headlines for Sunday, 30th of July, 2023. New typhoon inside bar. New typhoon inside bar. It seems like our fellow countrymen can't take a break as a new typhoon has entered the Philippines' area of responsibility when Typhoon Egay hasn't even gotten out of our borders. Yet. Typhoon Falcon, international name Kanun, is the sixth tropical cyclone entering the PAR and third formed this July. Looks like our words about our water supplies and dams are unfounded, at least for now. But Typhoon Falcon will, and in some cases have already prompted many provinces and island municipalities to stage relocation for will be affected groups by the incoming surge of the cyclone, with many disruptions in life, economy, and commodity interruption with regards to relocations and disruption of normal life. Fishermen and grid lines at risk of damage from tropical cyclone. This is the news headline for Monday, 31st of July, 2023. PHEU deepens ties. This is the news headlines for Monday, 31st of July, 2023. PHEU deepens ties. PHEU deepens ties. After a bilateral meeting at the Malacanang Palace, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has issued a statement regarding talks of deepening economic and trade ties between the between the two entities towards negotiation for a Philippine-EU free trade agreement. At least that's what Marcus said. Free trade agreements are agreements and measures employed by two or more countries or blocks to lessen the reduced barriers to imports and exports with little to no tariffs. Just overall dipping our hands into the market. This is just like the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP agreement signed last month which introduces our market with foreign goods and although unlike RCEP, will probably be gaining as their products will cost far better than in RCEP with our Southeast Asian neighbors. However, we might be heavily reliant on imports, especially on luxury goods. This episode starts the August 2023 series of episodes and the start of the National Catfish Month, though that seems like every month to me. Hey. These are the new headlines for Tuesday, 1st of August, 2023. Congressman Tevez as terrorist and new general of Philippine Army appointed. Congressman Tevez as terrorist. The Anti-Terrorism Council, or ATC, has formally designated the Negros Oriental Congressman Arnolfo Tevez Jr. and a dozen others as terrorists amid alleged involvement branded as suspect due to series of killings, most notably the killing of the former Negros Oriental and political rival, Governor Roel de Gamo. Representative Arnolfo Tevez and his council has responded to the recent designation of the ATC, denying any involvement regarding the assassination of the governor. However, he said he will not be returning to the country. According to the DOJ, despite being tagged as a terrorist, the representative is not considered as a fugitive. The Anti-Money Laundering Council has also released a freeze order against assets of the designated terrorist by the ATC. New General of Philippine Army appointed. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has appointed Lieutenant General Ro Roy Galido as the new 66th Commanding General of the Philippine Army, replacing recently appointed General Romeo Browner, who was designated as the new AFP Chief last July. This is the news headlines for Wednesday, 2nd of August, 2023. Legal Pogo Hub Doing Illegal Things a licensed Pogo Hub or a licensed Philippine offshore gaming operator in Pasay City was allegedly found to be also doing some little scammy and cybercrime activities, particularly lab scams and cryptocurrency scams. Though that's a bit redundant, but okay. Taking 650 workers into custody now with violence, particularly eight, and coordination with the Department of Justice, 
Philippine Anti-Organized Crime Commission, National Bureau of Investigation, and Philippine National Police so that the DOJ doesn't get so angry just like what Remulia did back in the raid in Las Piñas last month. These are the news headlines for Thursday, 3rd of August, 2023. DepEd sets back to school date and BIR versus tax evaders. BIR versus tax evaders. DepEd sets back to school date. The Department of Education has announced that the back-to-school date for public schools will be in August 29th, while also providing a guideline for public schools wherein they could start their school years from the first week of June to the last day of August. DEPA has also launched their National Learning Camps project to help students from the first grade to senior high school to recap students on certain topics that may have been missed due to class schedule and other subject lessons because of time and learning constraints. BIR versus Tax Evaders The Bureau of Internal Revenue has filed tax evasion charges against 127 companies and 214 corporate officers to the Department of Justice which, according to the BIR Commissioner Lumagi, these companies have an estimated unpaid taxes of more than 6 billion pesos. This is the news headlines for Friday, 4th of August, 2023. PSA inflation down to 4.7%. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, overall inflation has continued to both dip down to 4.7%, 0.7% less June 2023 inflation rate of 5.4%, the sixth month consecutive decrease in inflation since January. We've ought to be vigilant as the inflation rate decreases does not really mean a decrease of prices, rather the decrease of the rate to which prices grow. It's Still went up but not by as much. Not that deflation or lowering prices will also help us. We need a balanced 2 to 3 percent healthy inflation rate of which we are clearly past. This is also an overall inflation rate decrease meaning it has been averaged out through many fields. Many products or services may have gone up in terms of prices. This is the news headline for Saturday 5th of August 2023. Manila Bay Reclamation Hurdles the U.S. Embassy spokesperson Kanishka Gangopadhyay has voiced concern over land reclamation projects in Manila Bay near the U.S. Embassy, apparently due to a blacklisted Chinese company working on the project. They underlined potential environmental impact of the reclamation project, though that's bollocks. I mean, why now? It has already been ongoing for months or probably even years if you add up everything. The whole concern over potential environmental impact of the reclamation project is complete bollocks. It's just that the Chinese company is the one working on the project that they try to strongman us and all Philippine agencies and departments. They already have the permits and have been working on a project for months. What happened in the last few months? that they suddenly care about the potential environmental impact in front of their embassy. But buckling down to whatever the U.S. Embassy wants to do, the DNR has called for a technical conference assessing potential non-compliance in parts of the Chinese company working on a project. Though, really? Like, for real, for real? China. 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 And fuel subsidies and some other stuff. But I can see is lost in the memory of patriotism. Come, up, Wormy. This is War Joseph, and welcome to News ID Worthy Recap Weekly Edition number 11. The summarization of the news starts from the headlines for the 6th of July to the 12th of August 2023. Get back for the Blazing Selective Summation. These are the news headlines for Sunday, 6th of August, 2023. China aggression in the WPS and by Nilat water interruption again. China aggression in the WPS. The Chinese Coast Guard has done its darnest again to isolate one of their most important potential ally in the region. What a freaking dumpster fire. They have water bombed with water cannons our Philippine Coast Guard on a resupply mission on the Ayungin Shoal for the BRP Sierra Madre. This is unacceptable. Ayungin Shoal is one of the closest atoll in the island of Palawan deep into our territorial waters in the Kalayaan group of islands. Despite numerous supports from Western countries, India and a host of other allied countries, they have not stopped their harassment and their incursion to our territorial waters. I don't even think this is because of the ineffective diplomatic protest or Senate resolution recently passed. It's just a regular occurrence of harassment and intimidation tactics. This is literally a routine at this point. A lot of powerful and 
influential countries have supported our win at the arbitral ruling against China's incursions in the West Philippine Sea, trying to uphold the United Nations Convention on the Laws of Seas or UNCLOS, which tries UN participating governments to agree to terms of basic constitution through convention. And let's be honest, just like the Geneva suggestions, they are just suggestions. Wait, Geneva Convention. Just suggestions of the laws of the seas, basically. Just last month, 18 European countries and some other, and India backed us up. Nothing will happen and nothing will change. I mean, ROTC my ass, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. I mean, what? This is in one of those underdog movies where the bully gets the comeuppance the audience has been vying for the entire time. Give all the Senate resolutions, support of the West, UN resolutions, a slap on the wrist of type of crap, but as of now, we can't do shit. Diplomacy can only get you so far. I know this is defeatist, but it's the truth. If our weapons are truth and reason, China's weapons are literal weapons and water cannons. Senators have urged moves and suggestions to blacklist certain infrastructure projects of Chinese companies inside the Philippines just so that they'll see how serious of a loss the Philippines is. But to be fair, we need them, no matter how much we try and pretend to, because the US won't. And I don't even like putting China on blast here. I admire China and its leadership. The CCP is the greatest that's come up in the last I don't know how many years. Their growth is unprecedented. They are a great economic partner. I don't want to be angry at them. I don't want our country to have an animosified relationship with the biggest partner in our neighborhood and arguably the whole world. But this is happening way too often that we need to put our foot on the ground. I don't know what actually would be the greatest option we could ever have, but we'll think of something, I think. And I mean, we should, although it has already been, what, I think around six to seven years after that urban ruling and, and decades since the first ever incursions in our territory. But you know, who has the bigger day? Oh, bigger stick. Manila water interruption again. Manila has announced on coming August 8 to November 2 in parts of Las Peñas, Bacor City and Imo City from 5 p.m. to 6 a.m. due to filtration pipe replacement operations. This the news headlines for Monday 7th of August 2023. DFA calls PH Chinese ambassador. The Department of Foreign Affairs has called in the Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Wang Zilian, after the intimidation and harassment of eight huge boats bombarding and water bombing of the Chinese Coast Guard to the Philippine Coast Guard at assisting resupply missions to our bases in the Ayong Show. The DFA has again kind of infutility, if I'm being honest. I mean, resistance is already futile at this point. Filed another diplomatic protest in a note verbal following the aggression. So again, just like the Senate resolutions that recently wants to do made it pass but still nothing will ever come out of it as i've said i'm cynic about this stuff and i do wish something fruitful would actually happen but as of now it just isn't worth it it just isn't worth it to fight against the chinese or at least an all-out war would be incomprehensible we're just not that worth it apparent and we cannot fight for ourselves so what should we do well we can hold all peaceful rallies we want we could hold violent rallies if we want we I'm not saying anything. I'm not inciting anything. I'm not against the CCP. I love their structure of government, as I've said a billion times, just like how many people they have. Although now it's becoming less and less just because of these incursions. But you know what I'm saying. I like the authoritarian but prosperous nation that they have built for the last 30 years. Those unprecedented growth should be mimicked by almost everyone. If we can recall, Ambassador Wang Zilian, the Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, had slighted the Filipino people before. I mean, with his misquoted and misinterpreted, as he said, clear signs of blackmail to the Philippine government by almost threatening, indirectly or directly, whatever you want to call it, the overseas Filipino workers in Taiwan as the Philippines continued to work with the West, straying further away from China's influence. I mean, I wonder why. I f wonder why. You this is the news headlines for Tuesday, 8th of August, 2023. China angry, PH ship not out. Is this the China episode? Who knows? Uh, the Chinese are claiming that the Philippines has promised several times to get the rusty scrap metal ship in service since 1944. The BRP Sierra Madre amid summons from the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines and multiple diplomatic protests. Wang Zilin basically said, China did nothing wrong. I mean, hey.
or the Coast Guard did nothing wrong because it's their territory and that we have the materials for a building or construction thing. Yeah, it's ours. What you gonna do that? Actually, if that same logic applies to you, yeah, that would be bad for us too. But, you know, underdog. Though I don't want to play that in the future when I am the president of the Philippines. And so, I will leave you with this. Get your stupid ships out of my territories. Because I still want to take Saba. And I like the reclamation projects they've done, just because I want. And the fact that those reclamation projects will be scenic. Even if it's only going to be for the rich, it will be a scenic view, which is like a guarantee, unlike most of Metro Manila. I know it's sad, but it is what it is. The reason why I support the reclamation project is that building infrastructure in an area so cramped that the government is too much of a pussy to take out the squatters in their respective fields. Like maybe clean up, take them to Bulacan or Rizal or Cavite or Laguna. Take them there. Or at least any condominium. Huge condominium. And then put some services there. Again, spread the concentration of wealth and government services in the country. Maybe try the Greater Manila area for that. This is the news headline for Wednesday 9th of August 2023. PSA June unemployment increased. According to a recent statistic by the Philippine Statistics Authority, unemployment went up by 159,000 or a 0.2% decrease in labor participation but overall 600 63,000 or 1.5% increase since June 2022. Wages barely changed, showing our overworked and underpaid population less appreciation for the proletariat of our nation, even with the whole 40 peso national minimum wage increase. Not to mention underemployment and job skill mismatch. Underemployed people in June also increased from 11.7% last May 2023, but down from 12.6% last June 2022. But down from 12.6% last June 2022 to 12% down 13,000 since last year but up 214,000 since last May. It bounced back after that large decrease back in May. This is the new headline for Thursday, 10th of August, 2023. LTFRB to give fuel subsidy. The Department of Transportation has targeted to implement a fuel subsidy program for public utility vehicle drivers by the end of August when it receives the 2.95 billion peso fund from the Department of Budget and Management. As a response to the numerous oil price hikes due to increased in demand of the global market and the stranglehold of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries or OPEC, the DOTR has said to be distributing cash aids for more than a million PUV drivers, giving our 280,000 PUV drivers 10,000 to modern jeepneys and UV expresses, while traditional jeepneys, buses, TNVs, taxis, and other UV expresses will also get a 6,500 peso fuel subsidy. The bulk of the fund would be given to tricycle drivers around 930,000 will receive a one-time payment of 1,000 pesos and 150,000 delivery riders will receive 1,200 pesos. The driver shall be the one to receive the subsidy, not the operators of their multi-conglomerate and consolidation of the, the bulk of the jeepneys. That's what LTFRB was trying to do with the whole PUV modernization program. Instead of operators, it would be cooperatives. I mean, that's democratization at its finest. But what will the drivers finna do? This is the news headline for Friday, 11th of August, 2023. A fine relief just because we don't really control the global market and their production. Like, that's outside of our control. DepEd launches Matatag Curriculum. The Department of Education headed by Secretary, Vice President, and admitted normie relying on experts to construct a curriculum, Sara Duterte, has launched the new curriculum for the K-10 to curriculum. Too many curriculum. The new curriculum reduces the current seven subjects, mother tongue, Filipino, English, mathematics, araling palipunan, mape, education sa pag pa pa plastic essay, pagpapakatao, pa and turns the new curriculum to five subjects, at least the five core subjects. Reading, language, reading and literacy, mathematics, makabansa, or patriotism in English, and good morals and right conduct. It is anticipated to be taught at the opening of public schools in 2024 to 2025 academic year for the new implementation of the curriculum in grade 1 wait Seven. School year 2025 to 2026 curriculum implementation for grades 2, 5, and 8. School year 2025 to 2026 curriculum implementation for the curriculum grades 2, 5, and 8. <laughs> grades 3, 6, and 9 in school year 26 to 2027, while 10th graders will see to it in 2027 to 2028. Why so convoluted of a release schedule, by the way? Why not just do it in one academic year? Or at least do it by block or contiguous grade levels? 
sa grades 1 to 4 as they have been previously doing. The Matatag curriculum was said to be in response to and address the educational constraints of learning perceived incompetency through congestion, through numerous and probably unnecessary acronym creation by the forced mal-educated acronym makers, for example, like Matatag. Matatag stands for Ma make the curriculum relevant to produce job-ready, active, and responsible citizens. Ta take steps to accelerate the delivery of basic education services and provision facilities. Ta, again another ta, take good care of learners by promoting learner well-being, inclusiveness, learning, and positive learning environment. And finally, G or G, give support for teachers to teach better. So basically how you would have to pronounce it for it to be consistent would be may tay tag may tay tag curriculum. This is a westernized version of whatever we have now. I feel like this is what their strategy is. By blurring regional lines by eviscerating regional dialects inside a school or reducing them to a lesser degree while also promoting patriotism with makabansa subject. That's probably going to be the Philippine history and some NSTP lessons about patriotism and or nationalism agenda behind it. So I guess it's it's good. Take out the mother tongue subject. It just sows division because we already have one language and that's the Filipino language. Let's not resort to using such dialects that could just tear us apart because we are emphasizing the differences between our cultures and we could not have that. We need to be one, a nationalistic populist movement. And, and so yeah, I think it's a good thing that we got rid of mother tongue and just, you know, eviscerated all of those regional dialects. I mean, not really because it will still live on, however, at a much lesser degree of importance. This is the news headline for Saturday, 12th of August, 2023. Manila Bay Reclamation Projects on Hold The Department of Environment and Natural Resources has deemed it necessary for the 22 reclamation projects in Manila Bay after billions of investment in constructions of land reclamation projects to be suspended. This suspension comes after the U.S.'s environmental concern, although it has been months or arguably years, that this land reclamation project has been going on. One of the reasons is because a company working in the project was blacklisted by Washington, a Chinese state-owned firm, and it's named China Communications Construction. I mean, why would they ask us not to suspend it all? They've already gone through and behind the anti-Manila Bay land reclamation projects, for commercial use. And as I've said, it's fine. Should we take out the PRP Sierra Madre out of a Union Shoal? The BRP Sierra Madre is a ship launched in 1944 amid the Second World War, also serving under the United States' Navy in the Vietnam War. Cutie August. As of now, the salt air and rust on the ship always needed something definitely more. Whispers of Are You Sure? Concerning its pitiful form, the Philippines, who had intentionally crashed the ship on the Second Thomas Shoal in 1999, as a form of the Philippines' symbolic territorial claim in the region. It's a discrete symbol or form of Philippines' territorial claim in the region. The debate's after a resupply mission guided by the Philippine Coast Guard was shot down by the Chinese Coast Guard bombarding the resupply ship with water using water cannons, a form of aggression we all know too well. But I can see his last in the memory of patriotism and nationalism blindness whenever those that support the removal of the ship that China has been demanding points finger to the despots that tries to be realistic, more like realistic, claiming that August slipped away into a moment of time, claiming those that speaks or contemplates predicts the mainstream opinion of support and nationalist fervor are treasonous, saying because it was never mine. Just like when Duterte and she is twisted in bed, she is term and the Philippines slipped away from China like a bottle of wine. We know it is never ours, the Spratlys was never practically ours. Back when we were still fighting the case in UN for the better, one thing was enough. To us, it was enough. To live for the hope of it all. Cancel those that argues we can't enforce it at all. And say meet us behind the jet ski in the mall. Like, so much for the Tata love, cause WPS was never ours to lose. WPS wasn't ours to lose. And we got it, unlike the August song, but you know, it's just paper. What would the paper do against the might of the Chinese Navy. China, 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 China. Dep Ed something and Makati the gig dispute intensifies. Come stop for me. This is a war. Joseph and welcome to New Sighting Worthy Recap Weekly Edition number 12. The summarization of the news starts from the headlines for the 13th of July to the 19th of August 2023. Kaya magandano for the blazing selective summation.
This is the news headline for Sunday, 13th of August, 2023. No PH promise on abandonment of Ayungin. According to the Senator J.V. Ejercito Estrada and Senator Jingo Estrada, their father, former President Joseph Erap Estrada, has never promised China to remove the BRP Sierra Madre from the Ayungin show. Now, to be fair, former President Estrada was the one that ordered the BRP Sierra Madre to be grounded in the Ayungin show. I don't think it would make sense for him to just take it all away. Senator J.V. Ejercito Estrada has blamed the failure, in quotes, of the succeeding administrations Arroyo, Aquino, and Duterte to establish and assert the Filipino claim in the West Philippine Sea, which gave China courage to scoop it all up. Though China was just growing then, now they're a giant. You can't really give the fault to the former presidents of emboldening China to invade her territory. It's the natural course of their growth. Maybe other Southeast Asian countries, but not China. Just watch my shorts or the previous episode regarding this issue. And to people asking why we don't have the kind of backlash we have with China against Vietnam, well, it's easy to antagonize a larger threat, China, than a smaller threat, Vietnam. That way, we could play the underdog trope in the global state. You know, win some pity points. We can also use the arbitral, este arbitral ruling against Vietnam, or at least the legalese behind it. Vietnam is just another boulder to roll up the hill. We'll get there. Probably not. This is the news headline for Monday, 14th of August, 2023. Makati Taguig dispute intensifies. The territorial dispute of these two cities over multiple barangays have been cause of concern to many students and parents as they also seem to indicate possible conflict between properties owned by Makati, including its 14 public schools, and Taguig's gluttony for territory. I mean, that's a lot of schools. I mean, 14 in 10 barangays? Sheesh. A lot of students learning hampered by this petty dispute and Taguig's disagreement of the offers by the Makati City LGU, if they could provide on par with what Makati has been providing on a loss, maybe my disposition would be changed. But as of now, I don't think they can. If you have no clue, Makati is seen by the poor and the less fortunate as a social safety haven with lots of free school supplies, uniforms, and educational financial aid for students. However, according to the Makati LGU, the city of Taguig has rejected its offers to provide free school supplies to the public schools, which, according to Makati City Administrator Claro Corteza, 30,000 students could have been benefiting from. The Gaetanos would be definitely F in Taguig, especially with the 300,000 in the 10 barangays handed over. A Binay or Binay adjacent running in the district would definitely be an interesting dismantlement of their stranglehold in the city. I mean, 300,000 spiteful residents would be in a complete plead determination to get a B9 in a seat of power again, at least ruling over them. The 300,000 would be a quarter of the total population or three-eighths of the existing one. An update, by the way, the schools are now under the direct supervision of the Department of Education's Office of the Secretary, but they'll also have some presiding council to administer the school, including officials from Makati and Taguig LGU or DepEd thing, I don't know. This is the new headline for Tuesday, 15th of August, 2023. Experts say no to bilateral agreement with China. There has been talks of a bilateral joint exploration agreement with China in the West Philippine Sea promptly offered by China a while back. According to experts, the sovereign country of the Philippines shall not agree to resume talks over joint exploration agreements with China. Now, I have my own reservation regarding this, mostly that I agree that we should hold a 50-50 to 60-40 split in the joint exploration in the West Philippine Sea. Just like what Duterte said back in the, back in the debates, we don't have the power to enforce our claims in the territory. We've got to remember to be pragmatic about this situation. Again, there's no honor in suffering. At least with that, we get to keep half or most of the otherwise unutilized resources in the region, or at least the disputed region. I mean, we've got to use the oil or natural gas there before it becomes obsolete or decidedly frowned upon. Else, we'll be losing important growth points that could ultimately help the Filipino people. We've got to remember to be pragmatic about this situation. Again, there's no honor in suffering needless. I understand that y'all care about the environment and I really do too. You can see my Abandoned Thoughts Lull series feature episodes for that. But we can't really do much. The Middle East, the USA, and every non-renewable source energy producer will not be inspired by a third world country's conviction of turning away massive growth potential because of some unenforceable ideals due to non-cooperation of the biggest perpetrators. At least if we get the resources that 
could be viable, we get those would probably just improve our living of standards. Pollute less. Or at least that's what the Kuznets curve pie. This is the news headline for Wednesday, 16th of August, 2023. Representative Davis Jr. removed in the House of Representatives. Nagbis Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Davis Jr. was expelled from the House of Representatives due to abandonment of public office by pursuing political asylum, long absences, and indecent behavior. Particularly, a video of him posted on Facebook dancing in his Santos and short shorts slash boxer. 256 or all present members of the House of Representatives has voted to adopt the recommendation of the Committee on Ethics and Privileges, or at least the recommendation that Tevez should be fired. There wasn't any opposition, per se. I mean, there are some that, that abstain from voting, but still. The representative of the 3rd District in Nagros Oriental has recently faced yet another case for murder for the death of three persons to the Nagros Oriental Regional Trial Court. He was also branded as a terrorist by the Anti-Terrorism Council for several cases of disruption of peace by allegedly conspiracy of assassinating and murdering of Negros Oriental's deceased governor, Raul de Gamo. This is the news headline for Thursday, 17th of August, 2023. August 25, FIBA holiday. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has suspended public school classes Though, according to the Department of Education, classes would start in the 29th of August. So, I don't know why he'd do that, but it, he said public schools. And government office works in Metro Manila and Bulacan on August 25 due to the opening ceremonies of the Federación Internacional Basketball de Asociación. I don't know if that's the right translation. I just did it word for word. Or International Basketball Federation or FIBA World Cup 2023 at Bukawi, Bulacan in the Philippine Arena. Private companies, however, according to the Department of Labor and Employment will be left the decision of suspension of workday. I mean, of course they wouldn't because who would? They've already been rambling about how there's so many holidays in the Philippines. This is the new headline for Friday, 18th of August, 2023. DepEd orders schools to take down posters. The Department of Education has ordered schools under its jurisdiction to remove any and every posters, unnecessary artworks, decorations, tarpaulins, and posters at all time to ensure a clean school ground. They also said to remove bulky items to create a spacious environment for learning. Kind of weird of an order to be honest. I mean, that would also indicate no Philippine precedents and any learning materials. Quotations of an incredibly virtuous mind would be gone. Our propaganda to children and teens would definitely be hampered and that's what we want. But of course, it's all for the conditioning of the children, which is what PSYOPs are. Yeah, they're basically conditioning the students and that's actually a virtuous task to uphold. But I guess whatever floats your boat, Madam Vice President and Education Secretary. The order aims to improve cleanliness of the school ground and facilities, also to enhance the learning experience by removing any potential distractions. Of course, lots of teachers have words to say regarding the DEPET order saying learning materials and posters should not be removed. I guess this order do remove the whole potential subjective enforcement of the rule based on what faculties and school administrators deem unnecessary and distract so there's no confusion there. So that's kind of good. This is the new sideline for Saturday 19th of August 2023. Mall voting pilot test for election. The Commission on Election has partnered up with local malls for the pilot testing and agreement to hold and facilitate elections for the 2023 Barangay and Sangrian Kapataan elections this coming 30th of October. The pilot testing of the mall voting was done in Robinson branches, mainly Metro East, Espinas, Manila, Magnolia, and Galleria, and SM City branches, namely SM Manila, SM North, SM Sukat, SM Ligas, and SM Consolation. The project was for residents living near the vicinity of these malls while the rest of us peasants will have to vote normally in public schools. They'll also be discussing on how to proceed with EMBO barangays under the Tagig Makati dispute. Also, no premature campaigning though I've seen my fair share of preemptive campaigning locally. Officially, they should first start after filing their certificate of candidacy this August 28. Makati Tagig, nag-away na naman. Sangguni ang kabataang elections. Roosevelt Station, naging FPJ. Kumsa, for me? This is a for Joseph. And welcome to New Sighting Worthy Recap Weekly Edition number 13. The summarization of the news starts from the headlines of the 20th to the 26th of August, 2023.
Kaya pagdana for the Blazing Selective Summation. This is the new sideline for Sunday, 28th of August, 2023. New LRT1 station renaming. What the hell, dudes? In memory and celebration of the king of the Philippine movies, the king FPJ's 84th birthday, they renamed the Roosevelt station of LRT1 into the Fernando Poe Jr. station, which I doubt will cause any confusion to millions of LRT1 riders using the service. Are we bored or something? I mean, why rename something so innocuous that it will just lead to further confusion of millions? Millions of Filipino riders. And the fact that these stations are named after the streets of which they are on, or at least adjacent to them, it just goes to show how this empty gesture really saves the bottoms of those that should do concrete changes that will help the Filipinos for the better. But of course, with this empty gesture, the Filipino will lap onto it. Of course, Senator Lito Lapid, another actor turned politician just like what FPJ was trying to do when he ran for presidency back in 2004. Just like what he said, Walang lapid kung walang FPJ. I mean, do I care? Like, who gives a sh in a video game? I mean, props to them for being cornerstones of Filipino entertainment, but why do they have to drag these ordinary people into these empty projects? or renaming of some fairly straightforward naming conventions. This is the new sideline for Monday, 21st of August, 2023. Manila Cavite Expressway New Toll High The new toll rate for the Manila Cavite Expressway or Cavitex has new tolls for motorists to look forward to. Here are the updated fees. From Seaside to Zabote or from Mia Exit to Longos Bacores Cavite, for Class 1 vehicles will be up 2 pesos from 33 pesos to 35. Class 2 vehicles will be up 3 pesos from 67 pesos to 7. 70 pesos for class 3 vehicles will be up 4 pesos from 100 pesos to 104. Another one from Longos to Kawi or from Zapote to Kawi for class 1 vehicles will be up 9 pesos from 64 pesos to 73 pesos. For class 2 vehicles will be up 17 pesos from 129 pesos to 146 pesos. And for class 3 vehicles will be up 25 pesos from 195 pesos to 219 pesos. This is the new headline for Tuesday, 20th of August, 2023. Comelec holding 500,000 pesos pesos banned from Barangay Sangguna and Kabataan elections. After five years, last one being held on May 2018, it is now decided that the Barangay and Sangguna and Kabataan elections is to be held on October of this year. It is now decided that the Barangay and Sangguna and Kabataan elections is to be held on October of this year. After five years of delay and a Supreme Court decision stating another postponement of the Barangay and Sangguna and Kabataan elections will be deemed unconstitutional, forcing the administration to follow through the scheduled election. The Commission on Elections has banned the possession or carrying anything more than 500,000 pesos in the coming days before the election to avoid void buying. The filing of Certificate of Candidacy will begin at August 28th. This is an open letter to those running for a position in the Barangay and Sangguriang Kabataang elections. Do better. We've been stuck under your leadership for so long, you left the people who voted for you in the dust. With all these huge campaign promises and grand presentations of your quote-unquote platforms, I understand that democracy is in and of itself a popularity contest that one is given. If we want the desirables to win, or whatever desirables mean, a societal reset to good subjective ideals should be the one proliferating in the world so that if you are popular, it will be because of good reasons. So that a popularity contest in relation to democracy and election be less muddied in its connotation where what's popular is an entertainment or at least just entertainment. It would certainly still play a crucial role, but rather something more genuine and principled. That being whatever subjectively good ideal that the contemporary believe to be of the utmost important in a quality of a leader. People nowadays talk about platforms as a sort of principled no stance to cover their unseasoned opinions. They see them asking for platforms as the best thing one can do. It should be the bare minimum. The election of incompetent, duplicitous individuals with no platform except some vague goody to shoe ideal repeated over and over over and over again has driven our ideal candidate from someone that does what they promise, seen through being a living example of what they vow to accomplish, and all the way to proven track records. Now, a platform, however unrealistic and unbecoming of one's character, is enough. Fifth in a math competition, back and fourth grade, put that in the pamphlet. Despite years winning election cycles, apolitical and less trendy, or being a slash part of the problem in the barangay themselves, only coming in the front whenever 
an election cycle is fast approaching but absent in group works or projects. You're obfuscating and just taking advantage because that's all you can do. And I see those people that brag about their inquisition of people's platforms without digging further into it as just insufferable because of the smug look they possess after dropping a bombshell statement nobody asked for. Good, you asked for the platform. Now you'll vote for them? Is that it? Just because they have quote-unquote platform. I know this is a weird bone to pick but you know how it goes. I just can't stand those sometimes. Just to sound like a politically aware person or worse, a political analyst, I mean more like pol more like a political analyst, I know asking for a platform is a neutral thing to start off of, if not a good thing to start off of, but to see it by the many as the end all be all when asking some question, similar to the naivete and optimistic kids stories morals, just like most Marvel movies, it's surface level lacking nuance. That's why that's why Scorsese said it's a theme park. This is the new sideline for Wednesday, 23rd of August, 2023. Makati Tagig Mayor's Pasiklaban Mayor Avi Binay of Makati and Mayor Lani Cayetano has started to distribute supplies to the schools affected of the sudden transfer of the Embo Barangays, 10 of them, to Tagig City. Tagig City Mayor Lani Cayetano got a head start as she distributes school supplies for the students promising more to come in a bid to win over those former Makati welfare recipients. But in one upping, I mean more like three upping just because of the quality, as one parent said, the rival mayor, I don't know how that would work, but Makati City Mayor Abby Pinay has also started to distribute school supplies saying in jest, Oh, as you can see, we're not distributing echo bags. Also confirming that the distribution is approved by the Department of Education. So, the Tagig LGU, in my opinion, has been desperately vying for the affection of the former Makati Zens, that they might forget the huge loss that Makati LGU has been shouldering in the barangays, 10 of them. According to the Makati City Mayor, the sum of the 10 barangays have been subsidized through welfare. Over over 9 billion pesos while only 1 billion pesos in return. A huge 8 billion deficit. I don't think Tagig has the funds nor the political will to ever provide the same level of service Makati has been delivering to these impoverished and lower middle class people of the Embos. I mean, can they even do it with their own? Without the former 300,000 Makati Zen recipients? We'd remember from last week the Department of Education has resolved to putting the 14 schools in the disputed territories directly under the office of the Secretary of the Department of Education while the bickering is still ongoing. This is the new sideline for Thursday, 24th of August, 2023. Formerly and DBM sued for anomalous COVID test kit debacle. Ombudsman has ordered a case against the company Formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation and the Department of Budget and Management for anomalous procurement process of more than 4 billion pesos worth of COVID-19 test kits for graft. Apparently and allegedly, the DBM did not do its due diligence as it was so clear that the Formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation only has 625,000 of paid-up capital and so commissioning them for a procurement service worth more than 4 billion pesos should have raised eyebrows and red flags. They won't and can't deliver the kits. This is the new headline for Friday, 25th of August, 2020. Illegal drug fuel day. A whopping 1.4 billion peso worth of shabu or methamphetamine was found in an abandoned, I mean for almost a week, utility vehicle on the parking lot of a mall in Mabalakat, Pampanga. It was found by the NBI encased in a sack of sugar that was about to be transported to Kaloo. I mean, Patang Kankalu Pride. On another happening, or drug fueled happening, in a year, a woman assumed to be an unknown courier of 3.45 kilos of cocaine valued at over 18 million pesos was arrested after, no surprise, get caught in the x ray machine. And we're not like the TSA. She arrived from Ethiopia and allegedly met a Filipino woman who offered her a free trip to the Philippines and a hundred thousand pesos for carrying the said bag. I mean, why the ninja check? Another drug fueled related case in Naia, 30 grams of of Shabu worth more than 200,000 pesos was found in a warehouse in the 24th. I usually don't add these drug related news headlines, but it's either this or the typhoon which hasn't had much impact. I mean, not that said lives affected or claimed by the typhoon is irrelevant, it's just this the news headline for Saturday, 26th of August 2023. 
Page new travel policy and added burden. Critics of the new travel policy by the Ayakat or the Interagency Council Against Trafficking has countered the proposed revised guidelines to Filipinos living in the country to be unconstitutional as it restricts the right of travel of the Filipinos trying to live by having to show a proof of travelers' finances or show money. They said that these added guidelines are futile as human trafficking syndicates could just provide their victims show money to bypass while also batting Filipinos with less than good enough finances to get out. The DOJ Secretary Crispin Ramulia has said that the guidelines would most likely be applied to 90 to 95 percent of first-time travelers. Prigujin, patay na! Barangayat sangguna yung kabataan elections, kasado na! At 9 dash line, naging 10 dash line? Kumusta for me? Ako nga pala si Avor Joseph. Welcome to News Item Worthy Recap Weekly Edition number 14. Ang pagbubuod ng mga ulo ng mga balita sa episode na ito ay para sa ikadalawamputpito ng Agosto hanggang ikalawa ng Setyembre 2023. Kaya maganda na for the Blazing Selective Summation. Ito ang nanaig na balita noong linggo ikadalawamputpito ng Agosto 2023. Yevgeny Pregozin patay na. Kinumpirma ng Kremlin authorities ang pagkamatay ng Chief of Wagner Group, isang paramilitary guns slash militia for hire matapos bumagsak ang sinasakyan niyang eroplano ilang kilometro sa gitna ng Moscow at St. Petersburg. Si Prigozhin ay tinawag ng masa at international community bilang Putin's chef. Dahil siya nga nooy may ari ng isang restaurant sa Russia na malapit kay Putin at sa Kremlin. Ang pagmatay ni Prigozhin ay eerily long after matapos ang kanyang palpak na rebelyon at kudeta sa Russia's Minister of Defense na extension ni Putin. Sure, hindi siya open na nagalit kay Putin pero parang si Putin na ang kanyang tinilaban. Makikitang napahiya si Vladimir Putin dahil ang kanyang gun for hire na si Prigozhin ang tumutok sa kanyang syudad at seat of power. Well, 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 how to turn table. Nagmistulang mahina ang Kremlin dahil sa kanyang attempted coup d'etat na na dangerously close without much conflict sa capital of Russia. Ang pinaka nakakapagtatakang tanong ay hindi kung bakit siya namatay, may nagpapatay ba sa kanya, o kaya na may sinong nagpapatay sa kanya. Ang tunay na tanong ay bakit ang tagal niya pang nabuhay. Matapos niya ipahiya si Vladimir Putin sa local at international stage habang ito'y nagsistruggle na lumaban sa Ukraine na ngayon lagpas isang taon na ang bakbakan, bakit noong nakaraan lang siya namatay, di ba? Ang weird. Samantalang madali at mabilisan lang ang pag-aasasina sa kalaban ng mga ito. Bakit ngayon lang? It's not like will doubt kung sino man ang pumatay sa kanya. Or malay mo, talagang nag-malfunction lang ang kanyang personal airplane. Kasama niya rin sa mga namatay ang kanyang right hand man. Integral sa war on Ukraine or special military operation. O kaya na may ang Ukraine ang mismong nagpapatay sa kanya. I mean, yun lang namang dalawa ang option. I'm not alleging anymore. Ito ang nanaig na balita noong lunes ikadalawamputwalo ng Agosto 2023. Paghain ng COC para sa barangay at sanggunia ang kapataan elections, kasado na. Nagumpisa na ang paghain ng Certificate of Candidacy ng mga aspiring mangungurakot as manlilingkod ng lokal na pamahalaan in the community level. Ayon sa COMELEC, sumatatal na abot sa 700,000 positions ang offer grabs simula sa mga barangay chairman, kagawad, SK Chairman at SK Kagawa. That also means na ang barangay natin ay may chance sa magkaroon ng reshuffling I mean, limang taon na sila sa posisyon. And it's not like the alternatives would be any better. Meron tayong higit 42,000 na barangay sa Pilipinas with varying degrees of size at population. Lalo na sa Maynila, sa bandang Tondo, ang daming barangay. Sheesh! Maliit naman ang sinasakupan. Pwede ba natin ripasuhin ang sistemang ito? I mean, reform, please. 84,054 positions sessions para sa mga barangay at SK chairperson kasama na ang 568,378 para sa mga miyembro ng sangguniang barangay at sangguniang kabataan. Napaka-burokratiko at vulnerable ang ating pinakamaliit na lokal na gobyerno dahil dito nagkakaroon tayo ng mini dynasty sa ating mga munting komunidad. Parang autocrash ang pamamalakad dahil sa parehas na sistema natin noong tayo'y nasa ilalim pa ng mga Espanyol. At kahit ngayon madalas ang mga noble people o prominente at mayayaman ang 
na nanalo, pati na ang mga may estado sa komunidad. Ang tawag natin noon sa mga punong barangay ay mga kabeza de barangay, galing sa mga prinsipalya. Isa sa mga racial caste system ng mga Espanyol at Pilipino para magkaroon ng division ng trabaho at kung ating makita sa ngayon, halos walang pinagbago sa pamamahala. Dapat natin bawasan ng mga barangay personal lalo na yung mga kagawad ng barangay at ng sangguniang kabataan. Ang dahilan kung bakit mayroong mga kagawad at barangay ay para magkaroon ng lehislatura na ibabalanse ang ehekotibong sangay ng komunidad which is the barangay chairman. Pero madalas crony ito. Hindi bumabase ang mga tao sa kanilang mga nagawa, plataporma at ehemplo sa komunidad kundi sa kung sino ang kanilang kasangga. Can you blame them? May pitong kagawad sa isang barangay at pito sa sangguniang kabataan. May napakarami. Bawasan ang mga kumukubra at nangungurapat sa ating mga barangay. Ang prinsipyo ng pagbabalance ng power ng mga kagawad, which is the legislatura, at punong barangay o mga ehekotibo ay hindi masasalamin sa mga barangay. Dagdag isipin lang naman yan, lalo na kung pipilate natin ang ating mga kababayan na maging politically aware, hindi lang sa national, pati sa local government. Napaka-low stakes nito, so why bother? Although, low-key, napaka-high stakes din niya. Because of the bottom-up approach of the barangays. Bawasan natin ang mga kagawan. I mean, it's not like may ginagawa silang substantial, kundi ang kumubra ng sweldo at impluensya sa kanika nilang barangay. Reform naman dyan. Ito ang nanaig na balita noong Martes, ikadalawampot siyam ng Agosto, 2023. Balik eskwela 2023. Naitakda ng DepEd ang pag-uumpisa ng klase noong Agosto 29. Ayon sa DepEd, nairaos ng maayos at ligtas balik eskwela ang humigit kumulang 20 milyong estudyante sa mga pampublikong paaralan. Ngunit I think obvious naman ito, kulang pa rin ang ating mga pasilidad upang ma-accommodate ang milyon-milyong estudyante ng mga pampublikong paaralan. Grabe, kung nabawasan nga lang ang mga confidential funds at na relocate ang mga funds sa mga substantial at konkretong programa ng gobyerno, I mean, at the very least, magbabawas ang mga hinaing na mga mag-aaral na nagsisiksikang para mga sardinas na may kasamang ginigisang sabuyas. Especially at ngayon, may extra budget pa sila para sa mga confidential funds. I mean, kahit nasa DepEd. Saan mo gagamitin yun? Nakita ko yung isang tweet ni Inday Sara na nagagalit sa makabayan block after they inquire on the confidential funds and the budget increases ng OVP at ng DepEd. Especially sa confidential funds. Basically saying na bakit tinututulan ng makabayan block ang pagsiservisyo ng OVP? Ang tanong may sineservisyo ka ba? It's not like may ginawa ka para i-construct ang matatag curriculum. Bakit ka ba nandyan? We have a long way to go in creating a safe space para sa ating mag-aaral. Tandaan natin na sila ang pag-asa ng ating bayan at ang pag-i-invest sa kanilang edukasyon at kaligtasan ay lagi nating dapat pakatandaan. Sila ang maghahalal ng mga pinuno sa susunod na henerasyon. Huwag natin sila ang haya ang maging katulad ng mga botante ngayon na madaling napapaniwala sa mga haka-haka, turuan ng critical thinking, obedience at patriotism. Naalala ko tuloy noon ang aking proposisyon. Alam naman nating hati ang shift ng mga pangumaga at panghapon na estudyante. Kung sobra pa rin ang mga ito at overwhelming sa ating mga guro at pasilidad, pwede pa natin hatiin ang mga pangumaga at panghapon sa face-to-face -face at online classes. At least that way, mababawasan ang epekto ng overcrowding sa ating mga selid at maaari pang mapabuti ang pag-aaral. Tignan nyo na lang yung deep dive ko doon sa aking Abandoned Thoughts LOL series, which I probably won't make another one. Ito ang nanaig na balita noong Miyerkules, ikatatlong po ng Agosto, 2023. Tributo para sa legendary broadcaster Mike Enriquez. Isang malaking dagok sa ating mga Pilipino ang pagkamatay ng isang veterano at patikang mamahayag na ating nakilala bilang isang matinik na broadcaster at investigative journalist na si Mike Enriquez. Siya ay isang haligi sa ating news, media at political landscape na nagbigay ng inspirasyon sa milyon-milyong Pilipino sa paghahanap ng katotohanan at justisya. Siya ang laging nakikita ng mga sumusubaybay sa GMA7 saksi at 24 oras simula umaga hanggang gabi. Bagamat siya ay tuluyan ng mga alam ng mapayapa at aking ino-offer ang aming condolences sa kanilang pamilya, hindi lang tayo dapat maging malungkot sa pangyayari kundi maging masigasig at ipagmalaki ang kanyang legacy at impact sa buhay ng bawat Pilipino. He will be missed and celebrated. Siya isang inspirasyon at ilaw ng mga binulag, bibig at mikropono ng mga pinatatahimik at tenga sa walang dumidinig. Walang kinikilingan at walang pinoprotektahan sa bisyong totoo lang. Ayan ang mantra na tumatak sa ating mga 
mga Pilipino. Ang aking hiling lamang ay ma-embody natin ang espiritu ng pagtatalakay at critical thinking sa political, social, at moral issues na ating ikinakaharap ngayong tayo'y nasa quagmire ng napakalaking historical revisionism sa ating bansa. Muli, paalam sa ating legendary broadcaster, Mike Enriquez. Ito ang nanaig na balita noong Huwebes, ikatatumpot isang Agosto, 2023. Dalawang bagyo rumagasa sa Pinas. Namamata ang dalawang bagyo na ang nasa vicinity ng Philippines Area of Responsibility. Sa Royal, nasa labas lamang, ilang kilometro sa ating border. Lumabas na sa gawing Norte Kanlura ng Pilipinas ang bagyong Goring sa China, samantalang kakapasok lamang ng bagyong Hana sa ating par. Ang dalawang bagyong ito ang nagpapalakas sa habagat na nagpapalakas sa ulan na ating na nararanasan sa bansa. Especially sa Luzon. Si Bagyong Goring at Hana ay ang ikapito at ikawalong bagyo respectively na pumasok sa ating bansa sa inyestemang 20 hanggang 25 bagyong papasok sa ating area of responsibility. Nagsuspende rin ng klase para sa ikatatlopmut isa at unang araw ng Setyembre. Ayon sa Malacanang dahil ito sa mga torrential raining na nararanasan sa buong NCR. This the end of the NIDW recaps for August 2023. Hope for many more moons and rotations to the sun and in other rotations, etc. Thank you for a full month of actual views, though not much engagement. I strive to do better when it comes to video production and delivering the news as fast as my apathy allows. I plan on using more stuff to make this as engaging as possible. Salamat sa mga